Hey guys, it's Nate here. Today I want to talk about the framework I use to write long SQL code to solve long interview questions or to solve more complicated SQL questions on the job. So sometimes solving problems require a lot of business rules and logic to be implemented in order to get the results you want. So this is especially true on the job as you're solving problems and answering questions. Not necessarily totally true for SQL interview questions or coding interview questions, but the deeper you go into your interviews, like the second or third round, the problems become more complex and thus longer. What makes it harder is that it's tough to train for these because it's hard to find SQL videos where the solution is more than 10 lines long. And usually they're focused on teaching you syntax or focused on advanced techniques. Not necessarily how to write longer code and how to organize all of that. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I approach these longer problems that involve multiple business rules and logical steps. So let's get to it. This example doesn't actually require any advanced techniques or advanced functions, but it does require several business rules and logical steps to be implemented to get to the solution. So it's important to have a logical and organized approach when developing the solution. So when you try to solve the solution before we get started, you might be confused in terms of how to actually approach the solution. A lot of times people's experience when, in terms of writing SQL queries only involve one or two subqueries at most. So the biggest problem that I see, especially with junior developers and junior data scientists is that they try to fit in as many business rules and logical steps as possible in one or two subqueries to get to the solution. And this becomes very convoluted and complex, especially when things go wrong and you have to debug your code. It just becomes incredibly difficult to do so. So let me show you what to do instead. Here are my four tips on how to properly organize your logic. So my first tip is to first, before writing any code, is to map out your approach step by step, logic by logic, and business rule by business rule, so that each of those rules and logical steps can then become either its own temporary table, CTE, or subquery. Which brings me to tip number two. For each subquery or for each CTE, you should really only have one piece of logic in there or one business rule that's implemented in there. This helps keep your logic and your thoughts organized and will help you and your teammates in the future debug your code or refactor your code. During code reviews, I like to have my peers and my teammates essentially read each line of code that I wrote and then explain to me what it's actually doing. So the more organized you are, the less convoluted your code is. And if you just keep you know, one business rule or one piece of logic per code snippet, the easier it is for your teammate to essentially understand your code. So this tip is perfect for code reviews. Tip number three, if it's really just one problem that you're trying to solve or answer, I really like to stick with CTEs or common table expressions in terms of organizing my logic. Because to me, CTEs are easy to debug and check your work. And I'll show you what I mean later as we solve the problem. I don't really like to use subqueries too much unless I'm actually applying a very simple filter to a table. You can use temp tables to organize your logic, but I feel like temp tables sometimes are overkill because they require a lot of code, but it might be worth building a temp table out, especially if it takes you know, more than five minutes to build that table itself. But if that's the case and the temp table takes five to 10 minutes to build, I actually like building a permanent table and storing it in my own database schema. This way, if the session closes or if I go off to a meeting or I just don't pick up the work till the next day, I have the table already built and easily accessible in my database. Long story short, I like to use CTEs over other available options. Tip number four, don't worry if your code is inefficient. Get to functionality first, solve the problem first, and then refactor later. All right, so those are my four tips. Let's apply these four tips to this question. All right, so this question is called third most reported health issues. It's by the city of Los Angeles. The question reads, 
Find the facilities that tie for the third most reported health issues grouped by classification. We're only interested in facilities that sell beverages, so a facility name must contain the words tea, cafe, or juice. So the first thing we wanna do is just take a look at the data set real quick to understand what we're working with. If we hit the preview button here, we get the records. So each record in the table is a reported health issue. All right, so what we have is the facility name, the PE description, and so it seems like the only two columns we need to answer this question is PE description because it's the category and then facility name because we're only interested in facilities that sell beverages. So we're looking for facilities that have the word tea, cafe, or juice in the name. All right, so this is a pretty interesting structure in terms of the data set. So let's first map out our approach to solve this question. So we're going to break this question up into four to five different logical steps here. So the first thing we want to do is find the third most reported health issue by category. So in order to find the third most reported health issue by category, it's actually a two step process using SQL. So what I do is what I will find the top three most reported health issue by category. So my output would be basically three rows. And then the second step is to take the minimum of those three rows and that becomes the third most reported health issue by category. So this step is actually two steps and it will probably become two CTEs in my complete solution. So my second step is basically to build a table or build a view where we're counting the number of reported health issues by category. And then the fourth step as I implied is to join the two tables that I created to find both the categories and the facilities that are tied for the third most reported health issues. And then to finish it off, all we really wanna do is report out the facility names. All right, so this is not too advanced at all. It just has a lot of steps and really it's a test about how we organize our code to get to the solution. All right, so let's start coding. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is just isolate the facilities that we care about. Again, we only are concerned with facilities that sell beverages. So we're isolating facility names that contain the words tea, cafe, or juice here. So if I just do a select all on the table with this facility, I like tea, cafe, or juice applied to the where clause and run the query, I should get facility names that have one of the three words that I just mentioned. So as the question mentioned, each row in this data set is a reported health issue. And so what we want to do is count up each issue or count up each row and then group by a category. And that category, again, is PE description, which is the categorization of the type of business, the size of the business, and then the risk score of that business. So it's pretty easy to do that. I just took the PE description, which is category, and then I'm just counting the number of records or number of rows that I see, and then I'm grouping by the PE description. So if I run this query, I should basically get the categories here and then the number of issues. So now what I wanna do is just order these rows and take the top three. That's just gonna involve an order by and then a limit three, run that code, I get basically the top three and I want to isolate this one right here. This is the category that has the third most reported health issues. So now in order to implement this second step here, take the minimum value of the top three or basically isolate this, my query that I just created up here will become a CTE and I'm just gonna call it third most issues. And so to isolate this third row here, all I'm doing is I'm taking the minimum from the CTE here, third most issues. And if I run this query, I get the number two, which is exactly what I want. The next step here is to count the number of reported issues by category. So that's actually going to be fairly easy. It's actually going to be this code right here without the order by or limit three. So it's really just actually what, I'm, what I have highlighted here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first make this code into a CTE and then write the code that counts the number of reported issues by category. So this piece of code, the CTE is going to be called isolate third most issues. 
And now I'm going to basically copy and paste this code right here because this code solves for counting the number of reported issues by category. So again, it's not about efficiency of my code, it's about solving the problem. After we're done solving this question, we can go about refactoring and making this code much more efficient. All right, but here we go. So we are counting the number of health reported issues uh, by category or by PE description. And then again, only counting facilities with tea, cafe, or juice in the name. So if I run this code, I get this table here. And so my next step is to then isolate categories that basically are tied with the third most reported health issues, which is the number two here. So this and this. So we're gonna take this table and then we're gonna join it with this CTE here, isolate third most issues, and let's see what we get. So I'm gonna name this piece of code N issues basically because it's a view that counts the number of issues. And now what I want to do is basically join this CTE with the CTE here. So here's my join query right here. Select all from N issues, which is this last query we created, and then join it to isolate third most issues here, which really only contains the number two on the key N issues, which is essentially this column here on third most issues, which is again, the number two. So it's gonna join basically just these last two rows as you see here. So if I run this query, I should only get two rows, which is exactly what I get here. So now we have found the categories or the PE descriptions that are tied for the third most reported health issues. The next and final step is to find the facility names. So all we really need to do is join this table that we've created here to the original table that's highlighted right here, Los Angeles Restaurant Health Inspections, so that we can grab the facility name that corresponds to these two PE descriptions. So my first step in doing this is to create a CTE out of this query right here. I'm going to call it categories. And here's my SQL query that joins the two tables that I just mentioned. So we have the original table, Los Angeles Restaurant Health Inspections, joined to this category CTE here, based off of the category itself, the PE description. All right, and so all I'm doing is grabbing the facility name. If I run this code, I get essentially all the facility names that are matched to the, these two categories. But again, we're only interested in facilities that sell beverages. So we need to include this where clause that I used previously. All right, so if I run this query again, I only get four facility names. These facility names or these businesses are linked to the same categories as the categories that have the third most reported health issues. So if we check the solution, the solution is correct. So the most important thing to actually take away from this is how the code is actually organized. So I essentially have five steps to solve this problem. And these five steps basically correspond to a CTE here, right? Each step is basically a CTE. So during a code review, or if you were to come back later, like a few months later to review your code, you will understand exactly what's going on in every single CTE because each CTE only contains one logic or one business rule. And how you're approaching the solution really just goes from top to bottom. So that's also very easy to understand. So the code itself to get to the solution doesn't have any advanced SQL functions or techniques, but it's just kind of long. The advantage is that it's just very organized and very simple. All right, so that's basically it in terms of solving longer problems that have multiple business rules and multiple logics to actually implement. My tips are really just to keep your code as organized as possible and as simple as possible so anybody can read it and really just understand what's going on. So if you like this type of technical content, please subscribe to my channel. The content is really aimed for the advanced beginner to intermediate somebody that is just starting their data science career or wanting to get into their data science career. 
So I try to really add as much real world examples as possible and then write some code so that you can see how I implement some real world solutions. So I hope you find this type of content valuable and edifying. All right, so see you at the next one.